and why I believe it's something that's beneficial for your child. Before I get too far into it, I always like to start things off with giving you a little bit of information about myself and my background and my passions and drive and why I believe that this is such an amazing experience. So I actually grew up in a really small rural town in Western Australia. So the population of my town was about 200 people. Uh, Mum and Dad were farmers. Um, They drove the school bus, which is about an hour and a half, to get to school each day. I'm sure many of you guys can relate to that. Um, And I, growing up, I never thought overseas travel or travel at all was ever a possibility in my mind. Growing up so isolated, uh, it just sort of wasn't even a priority. It wasn't until I actually left school, me and one of my mates bought this really piece of junk van and we fixed it up the best that we could and we finished our studies and we packed everything in the back of it and we did the big loop around Australia. And it was here on this trip, which was meant to be a nine-month trip around Australia to sort of have an adventure and sort of get out of our comfort zone and our fishbowl. It actually turned into a -a two-and-a-half-year journey for myself, finishing Australia and then actually buying a one-way ticket to go through South East Asia and eventually living in North America for two years after my two-and-a-half-year adventure. So I continued on. So I didn't get to see my parents for a long time, which they may not have liked as much, but it was one epic journey where I learnt so much about myself and what I'm capable of and what I can actually do. Growing up in that small little town, it was actually called Grass Patch, if anyone knows. I'm, I'd be very surprised if anyone did. Um, if I ever needed to, you know, if my car ever broke down or ever got a flat battery or I'd forgotten to buy milk, I knew everyone involved. I could give a phone call to the farmer next to me and he'd come and tow me home or all that sort of thing. It was never actually getting out of my comfort zone to be really pushed and, you know, being out there and making mistakes and having to work out a game plan without just having to rely on other people. And that's what we do at World Challenge and that's why I think it is such a powerful learning tool for your children as young adults to go out of their comfort zone. It's safe out of their comfort zone, but to be out of their comfort zone to make mistakes, make decisions, and if it doesn't work out, to make a plan together as a team and find that plan B and keep moving forward. I was lucky enough last year to get away with a team uh, to Laos, and it was absolutely amazing to see firsthand how the kids were sort of taking on these new roles and responsibilities. Because in country, it is the students who are in charge of managing a budget, of organising transportation, accommodation. And at the end of the day, they're telling the teachers what to do and the World Challenge leader. They're making the decisions as a team and as individuals as well. So you are going to make mistakes. And actually, when I was in in Laos last year, uh, a team got on the bus going south instead of north. So I meant to go to Vientiane, Luang Phang, sorry, and they ended up in in Vientiane again. So the teachers knew that. The World Challenge leader knew that. The students obviously didn't. (laughs) It wasn't until about six, six hours later someone got the map out and went, we've made a mistake. And then you have to start looking at How am I going to resolve this issue? Are we going to fall on a heap on the side of the road? Are we going to come together and build some resilience and work out, well, we need accommodation for tonight. We need to start, you know, we need to book a bus for tomorrow. We need to um, let our provider know that we were going to stay with last night, that we're not going to make it, obviously, so we can get our money back. It's skills like that that is why we do World Challenge and why I think it will set your children up to whether it be when they're going on to go to university or get their first job or whatever it may be, they'll have skills that they've learnt over the next 18 months of this program to help them succeed. So this is my team here actually crunching numbers and working out how much breakfast is going to cost and how much we all get for the day. Um, Sometimes there's mistakes and you don't quite get bacon and eggs that you hope for, but it is an amazing experience. Um, I actually... Just seeing what the the kids have grown. So that first day of getting off the bus, getting off the plane and getting hit with this different heat, different temperature, um, getting from the airport to the accommodation, that is the first challenge and that sort of can take anywhere from half an hour to five or six hours depending on the level of skill of the team and how much work they've put in beforehand. That's the chief, actually, that we stayed with in the village. Um, And the the word that I learnt while away was Phalang Su, which means tall westerner, which I was called every single place that I went. (laughs) Now, tonight, things that I'd like you to consider, these are things that are going to be different from family to family, but these are the three things that I really think are the important questions. Is it value for money? Is it safe? 
Your child's going to be going away with World Challenge on a four-week expedition in November next year. You need to know that what we do is safe and you're in the, in the safest hands possible. And is it right for us? Is it right for you as a family? Is this right for your child? Does this fit with your family? So this is something to take home and actually talk about as a family if this is right for you. So why does World Challenge exist? There's a bit of a quote here and I believe in this quote 100% that today there's a cotton wool effect. Kids aren't allowed to make mistakes. Growing up, I knew that, you know, you don't want to make mistakes. Mistakes are bad. You fail, it's bad. I think having a crack, having a go and learning from those mistakes and moving forward and finding out, you know, what I am capable of. Can I, you know, all right, plan A didn't work. Is plan B going to work? Different ways, different solutions. Having a go. So that's why I think it's actually being faced with challenges, overstepping obstacles and moving forward. So... Our belief, we install life skills in young people. So it's about giving students the opportunity to be a leader, to build resilience, to find out what they are capable of, to manage money. That's a huge skill in itself, is actually money management. And these are opportunities that children and students will get throughout the program, is teaching them how to budget, how to barter, what's something worth. And our mission is we partner up with school. So this is working together with the school, um, and we're facilitating meetings throughout the whole program. So we're working as a team with World Challenge and the school and the students to actually get all these outcomes for your child. And what we do is powerful student-led expeditions. So these expeditions and every expedition that we do is student-led. So it's not run by us telling the kids what to do on like it's a holiday. This is up to you guys to actually call the shots. You're planning your itinerary. You're seeing what you want to see, and you're doing what is important to you. And just before I go any further, parents aren't allowed to go. I'm sorry. So if there's anyone who's sort of thinking, wouldn't mind coming, I'm sorry, it's unfortunate. Uh, so a bit of scale and scope. So we partner up with around 1,000 schools around the world, uh, sending 10,000 students to over 50 destinations. <coughs> and we're 100% focused on student-led expeditions. So like I said, this is what we do, is sending young children, young adults, to developing countries to develop life skills. So where in the world are they going? You might have already had a bit of a chat. You might already have a bit of an idea. Uh, it's two of my favourite destinations, not only in Southeast Asia, but in the world. I think uh, Thailand and Cambodia are just absolutely unbelievable. They are beautiful from the temples up in, the, in Siem Reap and the Angkor temples, right through to Chiang Mai and Chiang Rai, which is just absolutely spectacular. I'm really excited for you guys. And I'm off to Thailand myself in a couple of months, so I'm going to be doing a few of the treks um, just on my own school holidays. So, so if you want any feedback, feel free to give me a yell as well. <laughs> Sorry, I've had a bit of a flu. Um, so this is an 18-month program. This isn't just a four-week overseas expedition. This actually starts and is carried through the whole program. So throughout the whole program, we're facilitating meetings, helping with fundraising. This is student-led, so I believe the students should actually be involved in raising the funds, whether that be getting a first job, starting a mini business, or whatever that may be. I think that is one of the vital parts of this program. Uh, some, and I will cover a lot more on fundraising later on, um, but just firsthand from being in country, um, there, was, there was kids whose parents were lucky enough to write them a cheque, and there you go, go and have an expedition, go and have a holiday. And there was kids who got up every Saturday morning and did the shifts at Woolies, or walked dogs, or... Um, the way I paid for my first car actually was getting the dags and the, out of the wool and making a bale and pressing bales, all those sort of things. Um, you can see that those, the kids who actually got up and did those things and actually saved the money and worked hard and set goals, they're the ones who actually get the most out of the program and you can really tell, you can pick them in country 100% because they want to be involved. They want to be asking you know, the chief of the village a million questions. They want to be you know, at the front of the hiking pack or whatever it may be. This is their trip. So... That is something we'll cover a lot tonight, but that's what I believe in as well. So throughout this whole program, the kids are planning their itinerary. So the students, you guys are actually choosing what you want to do. All that we've set with the school is the destinations, and I think we've done a pretty good job choosing the destinations and the travel dates. So the rest is actually up to you guys on what you want to plan and what you want to see. So if there's a hike that you want to do, which is really tricky and really hard, there's hikes like that. Um, if there's community engagement phases that you really believe in and you're passionate about, 
that's up to you guys as well. And also it's team building. You're going to be living in each, side, each other's pockets. For the next four weeks in November, you may not be best friends right now, but you're going to have to get along. So this is a lot like life as well. You're going to have to work as a team. You might disagree sometimes. You might not see eye to eye all the time, but to move forward and get you to be constructive as a team, these are skills that you have to acquire. So we're teaching you skills like this as well, so team building and actually how to work with different personalities. And I think that's an amazing trade in itself. Every World Challenge expedition is actually broken up into four phases. So the first phase being acclimatisation. So you guys are going to be arriving in Phnom Penh in Cambodia. There's going to be new sounds, new smells, new sights, different modes of transport. The food's going to be different, but the mock curries in Cambodia are absolutely spot on, trust me. They are fantastic. Buying food from local markets is all about bartering. So for some of you, this may be the first time you've actually had a chance to barter. And honestly, it doesn't matter where you go, whether it be Thailand or Cambodia, they respect a good barterer. Don't overpay. Something is always something to work with. This is also the first chance to have a go at these new responsibilities and roles that we've spoken about. So whether that be organising the transportation, accommodation, setting up for future treks, these are new responsibilities to you guys. So we want to give you a couple of days to settle in, get used to your new surroundings. Also in Phnom Penh, I'm not sure if you're aware of, there's some, there's some horrific history in the late, late 70s, early 80s with the Khmer Rouge. So this is an opportunity to experience that as well. And it's something that I've, I've been through and um, visited these locations myself uh, and it's something which will stay with you for the rest of your life um, so definitely check out S21 and things like that as well so once you've acclimatised your new, your new home your new, you know, for the next four weeks seen the locals, got to see the sites sort of starting to settle in on where you think you are as a team, you've mastered the tuk-tuk, that's a skill in itself we actually like to challenge you we like to challenge the students and we do this not just physically, but mentally. And we do this through a trek. And this is a trek that the, the students have chose 12, 18 months prior. So they're well more than aware of how hard and how tricky it's going to be. But the idea of this is goal setting. Daily goal setting, hourly goal setting. If you're unfit like me, sometimes 20-minute goal setting, that hill. There's going to be sticks, there's going to be mud. But it is an opportunity to you know, find out what you're, what you're actually capable of doing. It is the feeling of actually setting up your tent at the end of the day or your hammock lighting that fire and working with the local guides and cooking in bamboo. You know, the self-satisfaction and the self-belief that you get out of that is just, there's, it's something that you have to experience to actually understand. It is unbelievable. Trust me, there's a few high fives once you get up that smutty, stick-infested, ant-infested hill. It's, it's worth it. This is also an opportunity to ask guides a million questions. Trust me, the guides are there to answer these questions. So what's that? They never get sick of it. It is awesome. And everything you're going to be carrying is on your back. So don't overpack. Don't pack 100 cotton shirts because you will not wear any cotton shirts because you'll sweat to death. But it is an amazing experience and it's something that I'm excited for you guys to get to experience. So... When you're trekking through Cambodia or Thailand, whatever trek you do, decide. You'll be visiting local villages along the way as well. So this is an opportunity to actually see the real Cambodia and the real Thailand. Get away from the city and actually experience how people on the ground live. Ask questions. Take photos from home. Show them, you know, this is my dog. This, I'll show you their dog. It's an amazing experience. It's a great icebreaker. At the end of the day as well when you've set up the tent, it is unbelievable. The next phase of the World Challenge, and this is something that, for me, I think is so important, and I've experienced this firsthand and I went through Laos, it's something which will stay with me for the rest of my life, is actually being an invited guest into a local rural community. So like I said, these are, this is the real Thailand, this is the real Cambodia. You'll be an invited guest in this village, so eating and sleeping getting to know, asking questions. And we've spent a lot of time actually trying to get this right so it is a constructive and positive situation and it's, it's something that I think that we do very, very well and I'm very proud to actually be part of this. But it is sort of changing mindsets as well. So from going in there and 
changing the mindset of, from saviours. We're not saviours. We're guests and learners. From giving back to a shared experience. From doing for to doing with. From short-term projects to lifetime awareness and engagement. So what it is is actually going in there and this is a shared experience. They'll teach you just as much as you teach them. And it is something that not every single traveller gets the opportunity to do and you will learn a lot about yourself and about the world as well. Whether it be how things are different and how we are so lucky to be living in Australia and having power and water and things that we do take for granted, or the similarities. There is huge similarities. And that's probably what surprised me the most staying in, a, in this rural community, village was, you know, all kids love football. All kids love soccer. This is still funny to any four-year-old no matter where you go. My nieces still laugh at it. So take games, take colouring in books, take photos from home. The interest is there and it is a great icebreaker. Not only will you be staying with the community, getting to know your, your hosts, sleeping alongside, eating alongside, you'll actually be working alongside uh, the village as well. Now whether this be soft skills, so in the classroom, t- teaching, helping with English and maths and working alongside teachers, or hard skills, so bricks and mortar. This is actually what the community's asked for. This is where they said, we actually have a need for this, and we'd, we'd like you guys to come in and give us a hand. So if it's a hard skill, you're working alongside local tradesmen. So it's the team that I actually went away with, we were rendering the school walls of the new school, which had been built ongoing. And I'm not a renderer, none of the kids were renderers, but we were working alongside local tradesmen, and I, I really think... We did an amazing job. I, I've seen photos and the render has stuck. It's still been there. So that's a, I've, I've heard that's actually quite an accomplishment in itself. So um, it is that working alongside tradesmen, working alongside teachers, working with, not, not for, working with. Now, a little bit about when I was in actually in Laos and staying with the community. At the end of the day, with the wall that we had rendered, it was a, it was a big job. We, did, we were there for actually for seven days and we'd done a fantastic job. The team that I actually travelled with uh, brought an Aussie Rules football with them and all the kids finished school from their other little tiny... It was, it was quite a small classroom. And they come running down every day and want to play games and it was great fun. We're kicking the footy around and um, it was just... You know, that, that, that ice had been broken and, and it didn't matter. I, was, it, I stepped back and actually looked where I was. I was on the edge of the Mekong Delta, kicking the football with 20 kids that I, three days ago, never knew. And it was just an amazing experience for me. It was just, you know, there was no us and them. It was just, it was just we. Like, it was an amazing experience. From there, we actually went down to the, the river and we went fishing and were throwing nets. And funnily enough, I'd, I actually rate myself as quite a good fisherman. Um, well I'd like to think so didn't get a thing but one of the girls caught a nice fish in the net and we had it for dinner and um, trying to get the fish smell off my hands didn't really work a little kid walked up he's probably three or four years old and got a heap of leaves off the tree and made soap out of the leaves and lathered it up and bam smell's gone I think if we could bottle that it'd be fantastic but it's just learning things like that to him that's every day to me that is absolutely genius so it's those experiences that don't sound like much but when you're there it's just you appreciate what you have, but you also accept that what we have is not always the right way. This is actually at my team here, and this is the front of the whole school that we did render. Um, and I'm pretty proud of the, the effort that we put in. I think it was absolutely fantastic. So, um, yeah, and it's, it is still there. It's still stuck. So the next phase of a world challenge is rest and relaxation. So this is an opportunity to actually get to experience some of the amazing activities that these two beautiful countries have to offer. But to me as well, it's actually a time to reflect on what you've accomplished. Because I'll tell you right now, it's not going to be easy. Navigating yourself through two countries over four weeks, it's not easy, it's, it's hard. There'll be times where, you know, you'll be struggling. There'll be times when, you know, things don't work out. So when you guys actually get to this phase, give yourself a pat on the back, like... Whether it be going away for yourself for five minutes and actually just, you know, thinking about what you've accomplished over the last 18 months, saving the money, getting up and working at Woolies or washing out woolly, willy bins or, you know, 
organising transportation throughout the whole country. Look at what you've done. What I actually really recommend doing is, if this is something that you guys want to go ahead and do and want to be involved in, write down your weaknesses. Like, next week, write down what your weaknesses are. Write down what your strengths are. Before you go away, write down what your weaknesses are, what your strengths are. And then write when you come back. What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? And I can guarantee you, your weaknesses will be hard to find. There'll be things that you've improved on. That's what it's about, is actually, you know, if it is a confidence thing, I'm, oh, I want to be more confident. This will help you become more confident. If it's I'm rubbish at saving money, you're going to have to be good at saving money because, trust me, it's a budget you have to follow. It's these sort of skills that we want to install in the kids, and it's actually reflecting on that once they get back, how they have changed. And if you haven't changed, I feel like I haven't done my job right. That's the issue, and that's what we're here for. We're also here to actually, you know, experience some sights as well. So while away, on rest and relaxation, this is a must-do. Watching the sunrise over Anchor Watt is something that I know Tim's very excited about. <laughs> I've done it, and it is absolutely amazing. It's the one sunrise that I guarantee you'll never forget. This is a temple over a 1,000 years old. Once the sun's risen, you can actually get in there and dodge all the other tourists because they leave and actually walk right through the place. And it is unbelievable. Every wall has little carvings on it. Every step has little carvings on it. The amount of work that would have gone into this, you just can't, you just can't fathom how much work's gone into it. And it's something that... I know you guys are planning the itinerary. Put this as priority number one. Number two for me, actually, in Cambodia is Angkor Thaim, which is actually... It's a 1,000-year-old, 1,400-year-old temple with trees which are actually 400 years old and they've grown all through the walls. It's absolutely awesome. I'm showing my age here, but this is actually known to us as the Tomb Raider. The temple? Yeah, you've seen Tomb <laughs> So these are the temples that you just have to see up around Sam Reef and the Angkor Temples. It is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity and it's unbelievable. There's other activities, so whether it be a whitewater rafting or a snorkelling or... Um, going down the markets and bartering and buying trinkets for mum and dad back home, buying that tailored suit or that dress or an overpriced rip-off Rolex. There's those sort of opportunities to do as well. We've got one of the kids on my team actually got an absolute bargain of an $80 Rolex. I was like, oh, that's, that's great. You paid about $79 too much, mate. No, 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 it's genuine, it's genuine. It's not. <laughs> um, so do these things, experience these things, plan the itinerary and it's what you guys want to see and what you guys want to do. I can't tell you what to do, but do this. <laughs> Another really cool thing to do in northern Thailand is actually visit um, Elephant Nature Park. So I actually sponsor an elephant here. This isn't him. Um, I should actually update my photo, actually. His name's Pookie. He's got a bit of a fringe happening. Um, and this is an opportunity to actually go and see elephants. And a big thing that we have changed in the, in the recent years is we don't ride elephants anymore. And what I actually want to do in every presentation that I do is actually put it back on the kids to actually go and research the reasons why we don't want to ride elephants anymore. Have a bit of a look, have a bit of a squiz through, and then at the end of it, see if it's something moving forward that you'd want to do as well. But there's opportunities to go and see elephants, and that's the cool thing, is actually seeing these you know, ton, huge animals actually being elephants and not just being a pet, not just being like a, a trained monkey. It is absolutely awesome. So... That's another thing I can just put in the itinerary, but I can't sway you anyway. <coughs> Sorry. Also, Thailand does have some beautiful beaches as well. <laughs> yeah, well, I need, to start, I need to start a different side thing. <laughs> no, it is absolutely beautiful. The beaches, so whether you want to be snorkelling and seeing the reef, there's these sort of options as well. It's not what the whole program is about, but over the next four weeks while you're in country... You have to experience some of these things and reward yourself as well for all the hard work you have put in. Now, the safety and backup, and this is something that I think is our number one priority. This is, without a doubt, the important factor of you're sending your child away with World Challenge. You need to know that they are in the safest hands possible. Um, I'm going to hand it over to a short video from Stu Morris, our Global Safety Director, and then I'll just actually recap on it as well. And I do apologise. I know this is being filmed and I'll probably get in trouble if anyone hears this. He's British. It's very dry. It's very boring. But that's the sort of guy that you want to be talking about safety. So I'll hand it over now and hopefully uh, it's all covered. Hi, I'm 
Stu Morrison on the global operations side. Good morning. Yeah, that's right. It's my job to lead our worldwide safety team to ensure everyone is set up for a safe, fun and successful expedition. No World Challenge expedition is entirely risk-free, but rest assured safety is our absolute number one priority. Over the previous 28 years, we've developed the experience, the resources, the technology and the support to ensure we effectively manage risk and crucially respond appropriately if anything does happen. Most of our expedition destinations are in the developing world, and this means that things are often very different to what we used to at home. Sometimes the transport and driving etiquette can be a bit of a shock, and we stay in hostels and mountain huts as opposed to fancy hotels or resorts. We liaise regularly with government departments and utilise private security agencies to obtain risk management advice, which we process and we pass on to our expedition teams. We have in-house destination experts who liaise with our in-country agent network to ensure we have up-to-date information on the local conditions. If a destination is deemed unsafe, the students won't lose out on their expedition experience. At any time, right up to departure, we're able to divert them to another similar destination. Going on an expedition gives you an opportunity to try new things, whether it's climbing a mountain, building a school play area, or whitewater rafting. It can be pretty tough on expedition, both physically and mentally, so you do need to make sure you're well prepared. World Challenge uses a bespoke in-house auditing system to screen the providers of all pre-booked and recommended accommodation and transport. There are times when the team will need to make dynamic assessments in country. Teams are only allowed to take part in technical activities that we've approved and given the green light to. It's really important that challenges are expedition ready. For our extended trip, students will attend a two-day training expedition where they make many of their own decisions, have a lot of fun, and sometimes learn from their own mistakes. All students and their parents have access to our online portal, which contains vital information about the trip, from kit lists and itineraries, to risk assessments and information about their destination. Before expedition, we collect information on any current or past medical conditions. And challengers also need to make sure they have a good level of fitness to be able to cope with the physical demands of their trip. We can provide support to those who need assistance with improving their fitness. All of our expedition leaders have to meet specific selection criteria before they're invited to participate in our four-day training and assessment course. Needless to say, only the best make it through. One of the unique aspects of a World Challenge is that the students take ownership of their expedition. Our leaders are trained to empower the students to make decisions and encourage them to understand and implement good safety practice. Expedition leaders and school leaders attend our preparation conference where they run through the nuts and bolts of their trip, discuss incident handling scenarios and receive bespoke medical briefings. Despite robust planning and preparation, the reality is that sometimes things don't go according to plan. Whatever the incident may be, our teams can access support and advice from our operations centre any time, night or day. Our operations centre is equipped with experienced staff, industry-leading technology and our own Western Union terminal to allow us to wire emergency funds to a team instantly. All of our teams carry sophisticated satellite technology to allow two-way communication with our ops centre. The nature of our trips means that we do sometimes venture into areas where the team will be a significant distance from civilization. For these trips, leaders will be more experienced and will have additional first aid training. We work with an international medical assistance agency that has a network of doctors throughout the world. They support us with evacuations and repatriations, and we're able to put our teams in direct contact with a doctor at any stage if it becomes necessary. So, thanks for listening. We hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions about safety, we'd be very happy to answer them. I'd like to finish by reiterating that safety is absolutely our top priority here at World Challenge. We can't eliminate all of the risk, but we do a very good job of managing it. Thanks again, and we look forward to seeing you in the build-up to your expedition. All the very best. Awesome. <laughs> so I'll just actually re-go over quickly what actually was covered there. I think Stu does an absolutely awesome job at covering it. So it starts off with the actual program. So it's actually teaching the kids how to cross the road. It's like hygiene, that's a big one as well. We don't want to upset the tummy, so washing hands, those sort of things for the, for the safety and backup. 
each, uh, each team has a world challenge leader who's trained in wilderness first aid, which actually means they can implement first aid for 24 hours. They're actually very highly qualified. They're outdoor editors. This is actually what they do, and they're right at home in these destinations. Uh, and there's also, um, for every eight kids who go away, there's one teacher who's actually going away. So for the team of 16, which is our ideal sort of size, there'll be two teachers there, and they're there for pastoral care. So it's someone that they know. If they need to have a chat with someone, they don't feel comfortable chatting with their mates or the World Challenge leader, the teacher's there to have a chat as well. And then we actually have in-country in agents. This is, some, this is actually someone who lives in the country and works for World Challenge. And Sawang in, in Thailand is an absolute legend. He's, so, he's ridden around the world on his push bike and he actually has a, he sells coffee off the back of it and he just really knows the ins and outs and he's fantastic to deal with for the kids as well. So he's there to actually answer any questions or queries or, you know, if something, if, you know, if, if you do need help, he's there to actually come and give you guys a hand as well. Um, and then it actually goes through to our um, operations centre. And this is something that I think, and I believe, and we are industry leading. So there's a, every single day of the year, we have a team out somewhere. Uh, so there's an operations centre running 365 days of the year, 24 hours of the day, seven days a week. And these are actually, um, the guys who man and the girls who man these phones are actually, they're ex-military and emergency services. So whether it be a budget inquiry, you know, we haven't, we've overpaid for something and we need to change the budget around, right through to the challenges that unfortunately slipped over and broken their ankle. These are things that they can deal with and they're very good to deal with as well. And on that, we can actually, uh, we have affiliations, we have a partnership with International SOS, so there can be a doctor on the end of the phone within a matter of minutes. We have all the um, Western, Western sort of um, qualifications and Western um, style hospitals. We know where they are, no matter where the kids are as well, so we can link them up. There's opportunities. There's, we can evacuate if anything does happen. Um, there's, there's, we can have conference calls with the parents and the, and the schools and the after-hour contacts with the World Challenge uh, Operations Centre, so everyone's up to, up to date if something does happen. Um, and while in country as well, Everything is covered by our insurance, and I will cover that again as well tonight. It is something that I think we do very well, and every, everything is covered. So if it be a challenge, a student's booking a bus and wanting to get onto that bus, before they get on that bus, they're actually assessed by World Challenge. The leader who's trained to do that, has it got a fire extinguisher? How much tread's on the tyre? Has it got seat belts? All these things are covered. The students may not see it because they are very efficient at doing it, but they are covered all the way through. <coughs> Is there any questions on any of the safety before I go any further, actually? No, no worries. I'll open up to questions at the end as well. So the next part of it actually is what is included in the program, what's not included, and also the price. So the cost of the program of the next 18 months is 6500 and that covers all flights. So over there and in country, all the transportation, all the country costs. So while in country, the accommodation, the transportation, the food, all that is budgeted on. So we don't recommend the students bringing a lot of extra cash with them because it is all covered. The ideal amount is, is what we recommend as a max is around $200 and that's for presents for people back home or whatever that is. Everything's covered, so whether it be snacks for the bus, snacks for the trip, that is all covered as well or any extra activities that they want to do. So if they want to do a whitewater rafting extra or something like that, those sort of things there as well. Actually, before I go any further that, it is that because the challenges are managing the budget as well, they can actually choose where they want to sort of save a bit of money here, save a bit of money there, and you'd be surprised at the end of it how much you actually can save as well. So there's those sort of opportunities as well. The safety and backup. So all the safety and backup, the operations centre, um, the pre-departure program, medical assistance, so while in country, anything medical is covered. And if that means if mum and dad have to come over for some reason, we hope that doesn't have to happen, that is also covered under World Challenge as well. <coughs> so the regular support meetings. So we're not just you know, signing you guys up today and then forgetting about you. There's actually ongoing programs. We don't expect you to be, you know, be able to step on the plane tomorrow and manage all these things. So it's, tra it's a program to actually build up these skills. So when you do get in country, you have an idea of what you're doing. So there's meetings run usually once a term, just coming in and then um, running a three or four hour program. 
And there's actually an overnight uh, training camp as well, which is a local training camp, which is run by World Challenge and World Challenge leaders as well, to put all these things into practice. So setting up a tent or a hammock or hiking techniques and camp craft. It's a really fun two-day activity, but it also actually tests you a bit on you know, getting ready for uh, your big trek. Uh, team equipment. So while in country, things like tents and hammocks, we don't want you to get your own tents and hammocks. That's all provided as well. And depending on how much your socks smell, you might actually keep them as <laughs> well. Uh, and leadership training fees. So these leaders are very highly qualified. They are fantastic and they are very good at what they do as well. So that is covered as well. Insurance, like I said, while in country, it's, it's all covered. Uh, discounts. So we actually have affiliations with brands like MacPack. Um, so for hiking boots and jackets and whatever you may need for in country. Um, personally, I recommend before you go out and buy a brand new backpack, go and ask family members or have a look on Gumtree because you can save a lot of money just by getting a second-hand bag which might have done one trek with someone else and someone doesn't want it anymore. So that's what I'd recommend doing. Boots get new boots because you need them because you're going to be doing the kilometres and you don't want to be getting blisters. Uh, and access to membership websites. This is actually an opportunity to see how your itinerary is going and actually chat within each, you, yourself as a team. Um, it's a really a good opportunity to see how everything's going. Make sure everyone's on the right page. If you're not chatting at school, there's an opportunity to do that as well. Uh, and fundraising support as well. So we actually have staff in the office Monday to Friday, 9 to 5, and they're there to answer any questions that you have. So whether it be the parents wanting to ask any questions, they are fantastic at actually answering anything which may be a query from what brand of hiking boots should I get right through to, um, you know, what's my trek, what's my child's trek look like and how far is the hospital from this point of the trek. Everything is answered. And they're also there for fundraising support. So as I said, this is student-led, so I do recommend everyone, you know, getting off their butt and going and raising some money themselves. So if you're sort of running out of inspiration or ideas, get on the phone to, to us at World Challenge and we've got so many ideas of what's working for other challenges and maybe it's going to work for you as well, which I will cover later on as well. Uh, and what's not included? So I think this is something to really um, talk about as well. So it's personal equipment. So it is your boots and your backpack and, your, you know, what clothes you'll wear in country. Vaccinations. I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to tell you what to do and what not to get and things like that. So I'd recommend actually going and having a chat with your, your GP before you fly out. Um, and just seeing, you know, what vaccinations you may need. Uh, we also do have affiliations with Travel Doctor as well, so you might be able to save a little bit of money there if you sort of um, drop that you're with World Challenge. Uh, the visa, um, off the top of my head, I think Cambodia is around $30 for the visa and Thailand's around the same. So you guys will be doing a border crossing, which is, if anyone's done a border crossing before, it's a very interesting experience. Um, but yeah, there is around $60 worth of visas, uh, roughly around that for these two countries. So that's something to um, keep in mind as well. And this is actually one thing that I think is really important, is actually the pre-departure insurance. So, you know, you don't want to be working up and saving all this money and then three weeks before you fly out, you hurt yourself playing football or netball and you can't go. Get pre-departure insurance. It's around $50 and it just covers you. And it's peace of mind as well. Um, we don't have any affiliations with any insurance, um, travel insurance or pre-departure insurance for that sort of thing. Um, a company like STA or something like that, is, they do very good deals. It's around that $50 to $100. Um, but while in-country, everything is covered on our end of things, uh, all medical expenses. It's just building up to the program as well. Is there any questions on any of that before I move on? Now, this is actually the bit that I think is the important part about the program. is Actually, it's fundraising and support. So last year, of all the kids that's going away, so 10,000 kids that went away with World Challenge, 73% was actually raised by the challenges themselves. So that's, I think, pretty impressive. And that's awesome. And it just shows that if this is something that you want to go away and do and experience and learn about yourself... <laughs> You just have to get off your butt and do it. It's just an opportunity and you have to be motivated. Of that, 32% raised the entire amount themselves. So that's including families who just actually wrote a cheque and said, there's your expedition, and those who actually raised more than their expedition price as well. So for me, getting a job, fundraising, understanding how to save money is a pretty big skill. It's something you need to be good at when you get older. These are skills that we're hoping that you guys can actually do and install in yourself. 
The best ways to raise money is get a part-time job. That's one of the best ways. So whether it be working in a fish and chip shop or we have affiliations with Woolworths. So if there's a local Woolworths that you want to get a couple of shifts with, contact us at the support at World Challenge. Um, once you've applied for the job, tell us what position you've applied for and we'll actually contact that Woolworths. We can't guarantee you a job, but we can help you get an interview. So you still have to rock up and be a good employee, but we can definitely help you get that job. <laughs> Start a small business. Now, this is something that I think is ingenious and so many challenges and students have actually... They just blow my mind on how they actually invent new ideas. A couple of my favourite ones is actually a kid um, went to Bunnings. I'm not sure if you're legally allowed to do this, but he bought birdhouses. He bought one birdhouse and he tore it apart and his woodwork project just happened to be birdhouses and he traced it out and copied it and made birdhouses and went door knocking and sold them. And he raised a fair bit of money doing that sort of thing and he actually continued on doing it while he was at university. So while his mates are working at Domino's and at the bar and things like that, he's still knocking out these birdhouses. So there is different ways to actually get involved in mini businesses. A fitness sponsorship. I think a fitness sponsorship is awesome as well because it not only helps you raise some money and get some awareness of what you're doing, it also gets you fit for trek. Trek's going to be tricky. You know, you want to be doing those things. So whether it be, you know, a team thing, so walking laps of the Oval or a big trek somewhere or sitting on a stationary bike. I actually did one last year. It wasn't to do with my travel, but we did a 24-hour row. And my, my glutes were very sore for many days, but we did, we did complete it. So a couple of uh, sort of case studies that we have is Lachlan here actually on the left. He's a bit of a legend around World Challenge. He wanted to do a fitness challenge and he went around from business to business and door to door and family member to family member and said what he was doing and why he was you know, passionate about it and why he wanted to be involved in it and what he was doing. And he rode his push bike from Melbourne to Sydney and his granddad drove behind at 25 k's an hour with the caravan hooked up and he must have patience for days. Um, and he actually was, got his friends and family and businesses to sponsor him per kilometre. He managed to raise $10,000 um, obviously it's a lot more than what his expedition was so what Lachlan done and I think this is why he's such a legend at World Challenge is he actually donated that extra on behalf of the school to the village that he went and um, was involved in and was a guest in so I think that was absolutely awesome I'm not saying you guys have to ride to Sydney but it's those sort of things and if you want to do it and that inspiration there is things to do or if it's a group fundraiser so we had a school up in Darwin who actually contacted the local council and said, can we clean up after the, after the show? And the council they said, this is what we're doing and this is why. And the council said, yep, no worries. So instead of paying contractors to come in and clean, the, clean up after the show, the team went in there and for two days picked up rubbish and they managed to raise $7,000 as a team, which I'm sure the contractors were annoyed at, but it is a fantastic job. Or like I said, mini business. If you are good at something, if you're a musician... If you're arts and craft, go down to the markets, sell things, you know, be inventive, use your skills. Everyone has a skill set. So to break it down on actually how it kind of looks, your part-time job, so if it's one or two shifts a week, over the next 18 months, it does add up. A mini business, so if it's $10 a week, so if it's selling jars of honey or whatever it may be or arts and craft, it doesn't sound like much, $10 a week, but it does add up. A sponsorship, so a fitness challenge. And then maybe a top up from mum and dad if it's sort of... <laughs> it always gets either two reactions. Everyone either laughs or it's dead silent. But it is sort of what I would recommend doing, and I'm not telling you what to do, but I wouldn't just write the check at the start and say, there you go. I'd wait until the end and get your kids to actually be motivated and do something and actually work and get that job and save for as much as you want. So that's how I think is the program should run, but it's up to you as a family as well. So a bit of feedback that we've had. Um, we get thousands of challenges contact us every year, and I'm oh, like, that was the most amazing experience of my life, and this and it was beautiful, it was amazing, can I go again? Um, one that sort of makes me chuckle a little bit, and I probably shouldn't read it, it's a bit of tongue-in-cheek, but... World Challenge has helped me learn more about myself in three weeks than public education has tried to do in 11 years. So Jackson McKay from Armadale in Perth, uh, I should actually one day find out where he is and have a chat with him. But um, that's a real cracker, I reckon. But it is, 
a once in a lifetime experience. It will be an amazing experience. You'll learn so much about what you are capable of and also how different people around the world live. And coming home, I guarantee parents, grandparents, friends, teachers, they'll notice the difference. You will have changed. You're not going to be the same person that you left in, you know, in 18 months' time. You're not going to be the same person when you stepped on the plane as when you come back. Your appreciations for what's important and where you want to go and what you want to do will change and it is an amazing experience. I'm just going to show you one more video. Uh, this is a few challenges as I get off the plane and parents meeting them and just a bit of feedback on that as well. So I hope you guys enjoy. Awesome. So, is if, if this is something that you guys want to be involved in and go and have a, you know, an amazing experience at the end of an 18 month program, four weeks through basically two of the most beautiful countries in Southeast Asia, in my opinion, um, the next step is actually to go home as a family and have a chat about this as a family if it is right for you. And I have answered all your questions tonight. Uh, there's an application form. So, inside the application forms, um, I'll grab one out. So there's actually uh, the payments information, so that's a schedule, so how the instalments would work. There's an itinerary brief of destination. And there's also some T's and C's as well, so I recommend having a bit of a squeeze through them and reading through them. Um, and then there's two actually two signed consent forms in there, so sign both sign twice, uh, and then a birth certificate or a passport. The first instalment of $290. And all that is due on the 15th of July. So because you guys are going away for the next three weeks, we've given you a bit of time, nearly a month, to make that decision up as well. So please go home and have a chat about it as a family and hopefully I have answered all your questions tonight. Before I sort of do let you guys go for the night, let's open up for any questions as well, if anyone has anything to ask. If you are a little bit hesitant to ask to the crowd, I will stick around for another five or ten minutes afterwards. So please feel free to come up and... Ask me anything you want, really. I've got to do my footy tips, actually. I've got... <laughs> Are the teams just made up of the kids from this school? Yeah, it's an awesome question. So the question was, uh, is, are the teams made up from just kids from this school? So ideally, an ideal size team would be 16 kids. Anything under that 10 mark, and we'd look at linking you with another school, going to a similar, if not same, destination. 
Um, I know when the school travelled in 2007, they had six kids who were interested, so they linked up with a couple of other schools as well. Um, and from talking with Rob as well, the, the teacher who went away, that was an, actually an amazing experience in itself. Was to, it's, another, it's another dynamic to the thing, is actually working and having to work alongside kids that you might not really know very well, which is a lot like actually work. Um, so anything over that 10 mark, and it would still be a standalone, anything under, it would be linked. Anything over 20, and we'd look at actually splitting you into two teams, just logistically trying to get around a country with 20 kids plus two teachers and a world challenge leader, it's a nightmare. <laughs> so I would split you into two. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> two birds, one stone. <laughs> Is there any other questions? Yeah, no, absolutely. Actually, it's a really good question. So the question was, is when the kids come back, how do they settle back into study and school and things like that as well? So uh, in 2014, we actually had a school psychologist from one of our schools go away, and he was very interested for the same sort of question, was actually, these kids go away for a week, all these life skills you say that it installs, and is it a long-term thing, is it a short-term thing? So he actually did a study on... He asked, all these, uh, asked every student who went away to fill out a survey and it was actually quite in-depth on things like um, resilience, leadership, um, you know, their studies and things like that as well and actually rating things. And the feedback that we've got, and I can actually send the information if you'd like as well, is every single student did have a, a, vast, a major improvement. It was, it was a settling back in. I think it actually refocuses and that's why we launched to... 9 and 10s to go away in 10 and 11 as well. So not going away in year 12 where it is that really important time to um, focus on their studies in that final year. Uh, and what you will find, with a, not saying every student, but the majority of the students would actually be that they come back and they really are focused because they've sort of experienced something a little bit different. So hope that answers your question. Yeah. Well, <laughs> have, you, have you followed any of the past challenged children and where they've ended up? Yeah, um, so actually, I just relaunched with a school, uh, Clannard College, which is an all girls school down in Geelong, actually, and they had a team who went away in 2011. This is me personally, uh, and dealing with that teacher. And actually, one of their students revisits that village every year. So she actually went on to. Uh, become, I'm not saying this is going to be for every student, but she actually went on to be head girl of the school and then actually went on and studied medicine. And every year she actually goes back to that one village to help out where she can. So she's based in Taralgon now, actually, and continually does go back. So we also have a lot of staff, as you imagine, who have travelled as students who want to come and work with World Challenge. Um, and everyone says the same. A lot of teams still catch up every year for a reunion and I'm sorry, I, I can't guarantee that your kids won't be inspired and want to continue travelling. <laughs> um, but, yeah, there is a lot of feedback and it is, it is a lot of... We actually uh, had a job opening at the start of this year for World Challenge and um, as of something a little bit interested, we actually didn't advertise it on seat. I'm not sure if you're allowed to do that or not, but we actually just sent out an email to every challenger who'd ever travelled with us and we had over uh, 250 applicants who applied for that who were just challengers and reading through them, it gave you the warm and fuzzies about what we do and why it is important um, and there was a few people who applied from overseas. <laughs> but cool. Is there any other questions? Yeah, sorry. That was one of the main focuses we actually have with, with the school as well was we won't set the, the exact travel dates until they are set in October. So at the moment, these are the dates that we're working with um, and that's the dates that most schools do actually go away as well, but we just have to wait for exam dates. One thing that should be noted is they do miss step-up. Yeah. I'll be going, so maybe that's a good sign. <laughs>
Awesome. Well, I'll just actually cover a few questions I, I usually get asked and maybe people forgot. Things like dietary requirements and things like that. If there are any celiacs or gluten intolerant, like gluten intolerant or lactose intolerant people in the room, um, usually I get this asked every once, so it's kind of stunned me that no one's asked it. Um, if there is any of that sort of case, what I actually recommend to do and what we recommend the challenges do is uh, with the destinations that they're going to, type in, I don't eat gluten, I don't eat lactose, sort of thing like that make up some business cards and translate it so it's English one side with a um, tie on the back and then you can just actually hand that, print off 50 of them and you can hand that to anyone on the street and they're more than willing to sort that out. So if there's any nut allergies or anything like that, that's a big one in Thailand as well. So these are the things that I don't eat. Um, and that's kind of it for the night, guys. I do really appreciate the time and I'm really thankful for you guys to show up on the last day of term and hopefully the next three weeks an absolute blast. Go home and speak about World Challenge as a family. If this is something you want to do, I think it's an amazing experience which installs some amazing life skills and hopefully uh, we get a team up and running to go away in November next year. But thank you very much. Have a good night. <laughs>